Alright, well, this is uh, my home. Welcome to uh, my nice little editing bay here. Uh, my name is Paul Wittenberger, director and producer of What in the World Are They Spraying? I'm currently in production of a new film, The Great Culling. You can find out more about it at thegreatculling.org or go to framingtheworld.tv. My name's Chris Maple. I am originally from the greater Boston area. I now live here in Los Angeles with my lovely wife. We work from home. We're lucky enough to, which we should go take a tour. Oh, so get down, Keithy. My pride and joys. All right, so I want to tell the story about my brother and his dog because his, uh, he spent like two grand on this, on this uh, purebred and we were talking about diet and whatnot and I had mentioned to him about using distilled water and he said, you know, the breeder said the exact same thing to me, Chris. She said, use, uh, have him drink distilled water, it's much better for him. It's right in line with this movie and everything that we're talking about, you know. Um, dogs are more susceptible. The stuff's gonna build up in their bones. How many dogs do you know die of uh, bone cancer and, and have their hips break on them and, and have to be put down for these reasons? Well, a lot of it has to do with fluoride poisoning, ladies and gentlemen. They drink a lot of tap water. And if you really care about them, like we all do, then wouldn't you do something to prolong their life and, and, and yourselves? How about your children? Been exposed to a, a lot of chemicals and heavy metals and have numerous uh, health problems uh, from the exposures and then, you know, of course that was during my 21 years in the phosphate industry. I worked with a lot of chemical engineers. I was in middle management is what I was in. I was an uh, area supervisor. We were working around a scrubber one day and he was telling me uh, the uses of it. And I said, well, I've read that. And he said, well, you know, they put this stuff in drinking water too. I looked at him, I said, you gotta be kidding me. And I said, why? You and I and our children in the United States are the largest consumers of hydrofluosilicic acid. As what is that? Hydro is water, fluo, fluoride, silicic, sand, and it's missing an electron. It's acidic. It'll kill you. You take your hand dipping in like that, and you're going to die. And it eats through concrete, glass, stainless steel, fiberglass, plastic. You name it, it'll eat it. So why are we putting that in the water? The chemical was so strong that it was burning through the concrete there. News 8's Christy Mergenthal has the latest. It was just before 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon when hazmat crews were called to the Rock Island Water Treatment Plant for a chemical spill coming from this tanker truck. The chemical hydrofluorosicilic acid is used to add fluoride to the plant's water. After several hours, crews were able to clean up the leak, allowing operations to return to normal. Your body has no known use for fluoride. It's a poison. It's a xenobiotic. It's, it's like lead or any other deadly poison. You know, a little bit poisons a little bit, and a lot more poisons a lot more. You know, mercury, at least, it's voluntary. You know, you get a filling, they might not know, but in, in the case of the fluoride, it's being given to us whether we like it or not. Right. So the countries now that have banned the use of fluoride, uh, China, Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Hungary, and Japan. These, all these countries have said that fluoride, number one, is ineffective, and toxic and should not be used. We are still using it. There's something wrong here. I think it's time that uh, we become aware and do something about it. The use of the public water supply to deliver medicine is pretty bizarre when you think about it. Once you put a, a medicine in the drinking water, you can't control the dose because you can't control how much water people drink. You can't control who gets it, it goes to everybody. If you ask a pharmacist if there's any drug in his store that was safe enough to give to everyone, young people, old people, sick people, people with poor nutrition, give it to them in any dose, they'd laugh at you. It's ridiculous. There's no way you can give out a medicine without being able to control the dose. And one dose cannot fit all and you can't give a medicine to everybody. I'm objecting to being compelled to take medication. You object to take table salt? I wouldn't object in that case, but I do object to this rat poison being shoveled into my water. <laughs>
right now, you know, dentists and dental researchers are really starting to take a closer look at this fluoride experiment of the last 50 years. And the research that's emerging is drawing increasing concern, which is why legislators in Tennessee and other places like Calgary are calling to end and ban fluoridation altogether. Yeah, I remember when they were, you know, putting fluoride in toothpaste when I was a youngster. And, uh, you know, everybody was just told it's good for you, but it's not. There's so many things wrong with fluoridation. It's very hard to find something right about it. We gotta wake up. It's not working and it's causing uh, damage and in addition to the synergistic effect, that is the fluoride molecule here, a aluminum molecule there, a mercury molecule here, together creates a lot of hazards in our body. And I really believe there is a large group of people out there who are coming out of denial about all of these things going on in our country, going on in our government. You know, I really feel sometimes, Chris, that we're running out of time. I I'm hopeful sometimes, <laughs> you know, but when I learn about people like you who are doing your part, it makes me more hopeful. It encourages me that if there's a Chris Maple out there in every state who's working towards these things, then we're going to be a, a world that is better off. And I believe there are thousands of us. I believe in the tipping point that it is going to get to the point where the awareness level is going to skyrocket. And when that happens, you know, we're going to start holding our government accountable we're going to start holding our senators and our congressmen accountable for what they vote on and what they um, introduce into legislation. We're going to start becoming more active in this way because uh, it's the only thing, uh, the only thing we have left to stand on. Now, you know, one thing that people really don't understand is, you know, they might their argument might be, well, I don't drink tap water or I don't drink any of these brands or, you know, I don't, uh, I watch it, I only drink distilled water. Well, do you cook with it? Because if you're cooking with tap, it's getting right into your food. Do you drink orange juice or milk? How about Coca-Cola, anything? You gotta realize the water in all these products is just as contaminated. So you can't get away from it, even if it's organic orange juice. There is no getting away from it. And the only way of getting away just have it removed. This is the easiest issue to end once we have the political will. If you have the political will on this issue, you can turn off the spigot at the waterworks and it's over. But to turn off that spigot, you need the political will. And to get the political will, we need masses of people informed and organized. I think one, like everybody else, who does have the courage to remove the blinders and take a look at this, this information, there's no turning back.